What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Long time no see. I haven't posted a video in the last two or so months, as real life has a real way of fucking everything up. Do not fret. All of my tanks are good, and today I want to do a big ol' update on every tank, including the good and the bad. Let's get to it. Before we jump into the tanks, I wanted to give you guys a brief explanation on really what's been happening in my life that's made making YouTube videos extremely difficult. First and foremost, work. Uh, I'm in IT. I do development and support in a commodity trading environment, which I guess as you can expect requires instant results. Well, over the course of the last two months, my team of four has gone down to one. Me. Just me. You will fall out of balance, split your differential, and tip the fuck over. Or worse yet, I've seen this happen implode. No, I don't want to implode, sir. No. no, no you don't. Ignoring the fact that I really enjoy working with those people, I now support an insane amount of work that has affected me both at work and at home. I've kind of been a dick to my girlfriend. Um, she's still here with me, so that's good. Um, when I get home, I just, you know, I, I don't want to do anything. I'm, I'm mentally exhausted. The second issue that's caused me to take a step back from my channel uh, was the last batch of QT fish, my quarantine fish. I'm going to be making a completely separate video about this issue in the future, but the quick of it is that this seller who sold me these fish, selling me good quality quarantine fish, sold them all infected with marine velvet. Within 24 to 48 hours, all those fish were dead. So a part of me being mentally exhausted from work, I'm now emotionally exhausted and just fed up with everything. That said, things are looking like they're on the up and up. I'm, you know, I'm still overworked, but I'm trying to find ways to manage it so that I can do what I love and um, stop having to deal with some of these uh, mentally and uh, emotionally draining issues. But enough of that, guys. Let's get to the tanks. First up is where we left off in our last video, the 90-gallon Clown Harem tank. A lot has changed in this tank since you guys last saw it, namely the clowns. The guys over at Bulk Reef Supply sent me the clowns of Fang and Sir Chomps a lot. Uh, if you want to hear more details on that, check out the video at the top right. They are doing absolutely fantastic. Uh, aggression is low. They are all super personable and friendly. Zero visible disease or parasites. Overall, a very healthy batch of clowns. You know, I, I love watching them while sitting on my couch as they have fantastic personalities. Unlike Tanya, the worst clownfish of all time, worst fish 2018, most likely responsible for the United States government shutdown. You may have already noticed, but I've added a large number of coral to the harem tank. Starting with the, uh, the sand bed, you can see that I've moved over many of my euphelia, which is thriving in this much higher nutrient environment. The, that includes my gold hammer, the purple octospawn, and the two two frog spawns up at the base of the SPS tower. Now, one of those frog spawns were actually the very first coral that I added to the 90 gallon harem as just kind of like a test coral. I got it really cheap at my local fish store, but it's actually a really nice splatter piece, so I, I really like it. Moving to the SPS tower, I have been slowly acclimating a handful of my most prized Acropora to the new water parameters and lighting setup. Uh, as many of you know, the tank came, um, these, these Acros came from a tank that were under 100% LEDs, the Radeon G4s, uh, and my harem is a hybrid build of LEDs and T5s. Overall, nearly all of the Acropora have taken extremely well to the change, including my Rainbows over Spain, uh, my Organ Tort, and even my Home Wrecker Frag. The one coral in the entire system that is not doing well, however, is my Walt Disney Acro, which was doing great in my previous tank, which is kind of ironic, um, and I'll, I'll explain why in a little bit, but after it lost most of its color, um, I kept it on the frag rack here in the 90 gallon for a few weeks, much lower in the tank in case it was the T5s that were causing major issues with that coral. Um, I've recently placed it back on the rock after I noticed some levels of improvement. Uh, I'm not really sure if it'll pull through, but I'm still seeing some colors and polyp extensions, so there's still some hope. Of course, what is a clown harem without its anemones? The anemones are doing fantastic, guys. Last you saw, I only had one Mark's Inferno bubble tip, and look at it now. Three large, healthy, fully bubbled beauties. Oh, God. Big, beautiful beauty. <laughs> ah! I'm super excited how well the anemones have done over the last few months, especially after I started feeding them frozen LRS every few days, and since then I've seen an explosion of growth. 
Another point I want to touch on uh, was my cleanup crew. I have upgraded the original band of something like five Nasarius snails to probably around 15. Um, I have a large number of Trochus snails that I tossed in for my 250 gallon system. And um, I've added two new species as well, including a sand sifting starfish, as well as my beautiful serpent sea star who eats more in this tank than probably anyone. Um, overall, they seem to be doing very well at keeping detritus out of the rock and in the sand. Lastly, I wanted to talk very briefly on my equipment in the 90 gallon build. I actually had the first real issue over the last week with my life support system, specifically with the skimmer. Um, over the last few days, I've noticed a crazy amount of bubbles coming from the skimmer. No matter how high or low the water level was, um, it just it wouldn't work like normal. Eventually, I took it out and found that the bubble plate had become dislodged, which of course was the source of the issue. I'll be straight with you guys. After having used this Nios 160 skimmer, I'm a total fanboy. This skimmer is bar none the best skimmer I've ever used. That said, I'm more inclined to believe I didn't screw in the bubble plate fully and that it was user error on my part rather than a manufacturer defect. Oops. Moving on, let's do an update on the 250 gallon tank. Uh, as you might have guessed, Tanya is still alive and kicking, unfortunately. Um, this piece of shit fish bites the hell out of my hand still it does not matter um the other fish though are good they're good boys as for my coral situation it's good but it's also complicated uh with a lack of fish in the system nutrients are ultra low i've turned off my skimmer i have reduced my photo period in my refugium in an attempt to elevate nitrates and phosphates um but it still hasn't really helped i tried dosing nitrates and phosphates uh, but in such a large system it's difficult to maintain without going through an immense amount of product so as such here are the results starting with my acropora they're actually doing mostly great there's tons of growth but they're lacking in color a lack of color is mostly due to a lack of nutrients, which, as I stated before, is a result of a lack of fish or a viable supplement for nitrates, such as fuel or stump remover. The Montipora, encrusting extremely well. Color is better than the Acropora, but there's a similar issue here. The LPS and Softies, on the other hand, are doing great because of what nutrients are in the system are absorbed by them first or at least more efficiently. The Zoas have grown a ton, including the Speckled Krakatoas, Utter Chaos, and OLA Jupiters. From a high-level view of my coral, I'm both happy and dissatisfied. On one hand, they are growing, okay? <laughs> On the other, they just aren't doing nearly as good as they could be. They're surviving, but they're not thriving. That said, I believe the solution is stocking this tank full of fish to provide the corals the nutrients they need. That said, I will not be adding new coral to this tank until I can bring my fish through my quarantine process. It's my 2019 goal to completely stock this tank with my dream fish team, which leads us to the next update. The quarantine tank. I have completely cleaned and reset quarantine tank number one, and I'm in the process of setting up quarantine tank number two. What I've done is added a double sponge filter that has been in my 250 gallon sump for months, brought the tank up to salinity and temp, and I added in some accessories such as PVC and Pyrex dish full of sand for the fish that'll be quarantining next. Depending on when you watch this video, they may have already arrived. But as of now, the awesome guys over at Houston FJW Aquarium, shout out to Dennis and Rich, have ordered for me four fish. Two swallowtail angels of the Ginecanthus variety, uh, one orange fairyback wrasse, and one yellow chorus wrasse. That said, the sand is there to provide a home for the wrasses and PVC for any fish that are looking for some privacy. The next video will be covering my quarantining plans for these fish, so expect that in the near future. Hey guys, thank you for sticking around to the end of what is probably a pretty long update. My goal is to still put out weekly content like I did before, even with the real life struggle. But hey, it's the new year, so maybe things will get better. I hope everyone has had a wonderful New Year's, a wonderful holidays. So here's to 2019. My name is Aaron. This is Aaron's Aquatics. I'll see you next time. Hi, my name is Gavin, and I am Aaron's number one fan. Yes. Awesome. High five. Ha, ha, ha.